Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Tech Medic. Thank you for joining me today. Today's video is going to be about how to use the IFZ Infection Free Zone Map Editor. So there's a lot of things that have to go into map editing and make it more like your hometown. I know that a lot of hometowns out there, you have missing objects when you load into your map and you want to fix those or you want to alter the uh, points of interest inside of a building because it's a mall and it has access to uh, guns and gear and food and you know uh, shops for growing maybe like a Walmart or something like that you want to make sure that all those POIs are in this object so stay tuned I'm going to teach you how to use this to the best of my knowledge and this is how we're going to start so the first thing that you need to do is, unfortunately, the game will not apply these changes to a map that you're currently uh, playing right now. So that means that if you're in a 200 day, a thousand day map that you've been uh, building up this massive base, it will not apply those to that because that save itself has all these different buildings and points of interest built into them from that version of the map that they have uh, utilized to go ahead and build out the template so you're only going to see these changes when you start a new game so that's why we're going to go ahead and start a new game and for example we're going to use my hometown and we're just going to go ahead and start this up these are the nine tiles that we're going to go ahead and utilize and what you want to do right now is take a picture with your phone so that you can use these tiles as a frame of reference or take a screenshot and you want to save that next thing you want to do is you want to continue so that it generates the map files locally on your machine. You're going to get a bunch of these trash tiles along with it because this the game is going to say, all right, there's some other areas, points of interest that are out here once you get to do the uh, expeditions to these areas. So you just want to focus on these nine tiles and you want to make sure that, you know, okay, um, I'm looking inside of the editor for a chunk because it's going to be loaded in chunks. It's not going to be one beautiful map that's going to show up on your screen. I wish it was that way, but until they fix the editor so that it pieces all these POIs together, this is what we pretty much got to work with. So once you do that, hit continue, make your settlement, all that stuff. You don't have to save. You can just quit out of the game and uh, go to Steam download the map editor and once you download the map editor and you start the game up boot it up go to extras and the map editor is going to be right there you want to click on it it's going to open up your map editor and all of those chunks have been generated right here so what we're looking for is we're looking for that center tile it just takes a minute for them to load and you could just go ahead and go rock it back and forth until you find that specific tile. See a lot of these are the junk edge. I think we're getting closer. Let's see here. There it is. So this is the one that we want to go ahead and load. You just click on it. And now I've already done some heavy modification on this map. As you can see, there's a lot of different uh, POIs, points of interest that I've added. I've added a lot of buildings. This area was covered by tree canopy and it prevented some of the smaller buildings from actually being mapped correctly. So you can go ahead and add the buildings themselves. You can alter the POIs. You can add multiple POIs to an object. That's the most important thing. So that you can have a building that offers both tools, guns, food, fuel, uh, barn grain, medicine, stuff like that. And I'll go ahead and show you how to do that. So let's go ahead and start here with our kind of uh, bar here of, of different things we can do. So first off, we're just gonna be primarily working today with the tools, the move tools, and editing specific objects on the map. So in order to add a building, you would go ahead and click tools, click building. And let's say we didn't like this empty patch right here. We actually wanted to add a unique building. You can use the zoom wheel, uh, scroll wheel to zoom in zoom wheel and you can use q and e to go ahead and turn the map and then wasd to move around uh, if you want to get a finer detail let's say that you want to cover this corner you just click there click there click there and make it so that it's almost a part of the other building itself 
let's just say we wanted this to be a massive warehouse. We can go ahead and do that. You can give it a height. Let's say it's going to be 20 uh, tall and it's going to just be a storage full of food. Because you're going to need a lot of that stuff. Um, and then click create. You can choose the roof type of this building itself. And just remember that the buildings that you create that are between the height of 10 to 15 meters are going to give you more resources than a building that's located in a shorter height. This one is 5.6. This one is 3.1. So if you make your buildings between 10 to 15 meters tall, you're going to get more resources out of them when you send your, your patrol to go ahead and scavenge from them. So now that we got this unique building and it's uh, pretty much uniform with this other building here, we can go ahead and add some POIs. So the first thing when you click on tools and point, you're going to be offered a chance to add extra trees. Remember, if you go crazy with this and you start clicking everywhere, it's going to go ahead and throw you off the map like that. So you want to take your time with it. Even though you want, you know that you want like a thousand trees in a specific area. And if you click too close to a, another point, it's basically going to throw you all over the place. Sorry for the screen, <laughs> but let's go ahead and create all those trees. We're going to click point. We want to create a building that has multiple resources in it. So let's go ahead and say that this has food and it's going to also have POI data of a hospital create it's also gonna have POI data of a security or gun storage shooting range there you go and create what it, this is gonna do is it's gonna offer the building to have multiple resources be generated inside of it and just for the sake of kind of showcasing this building, let's go ahead and add some fuel too. So let's go ahead and say a uh, petrol station. Where is it? There we go. Create that. And if, of course, the move tools, if you want to go ahead and move this building somewhere else, you can go ahead and do that. You also see the button to clone it itself. You can go ahead and do that as well. But I highly recommend that you do this cloning process for your own original creations because a lot of the locations that you find inside of the game will have address information and all of that ad address information is going to tell you know okay there's a phone number there there is a bunch of other stuff the actual physical address it's going to have all those mechanics built into that building and when there's two being placed out there you know from the original um clone itself it's just going to have a conflict and you're actually going to lose those POIs. So all that work that you spent in duplicating a specific building is not going to actually be saved inside of the game. Uh, and you can bug out the original building itself too. So I highly recommend you guys just making your own buildings and editing them that way. You can edit an existing building like one of these random little shops here. You can change the height. Let's say it's 10. Now we're going to make it a food. All we got to do is hit apply and bam, we've got a new POI right there. You can do this to every building you want. And let's say that we, we just have a neighborhood here that's going to come up with question mark POIs anyway. So let's go ahead and click point. And let's just say that these are all going to be... Mm, let's just say bakery shops. You can add multiple at the same time. And bam, we've got a bunch of uh, POIs that are there. There is a way to add wrecks and add bricks in there, but I have not found the correct label for them. And it's all inside of the point POI, I believe. I think if we go to POI object, and then we can go to a wreck. And these will add vehicles. Or it was supposed to add vehicles, but let's go say none. POI data. There's no data for a wreck inside of here. Let's go ahead and click out of this. I 
believe it's in custom object. It's in point, it's in point data. Let's go change that to point object and let's change that to rec. Let's add a couple of cars to this parking lot. It did work for me at one on one of the maps itself, but it doesn't look like it's saving. So we're going to forgo that and we're just going to utilize the tools that we have for now. You're going to notice these colored areas. These colored areas are defining the land itself. This is an industrial area, so it's going to make sure that it covers all of the buildings inside of it with that industrial label, which is going to offer tools and fuel and probably some uh, ammunition, things like that. This is labeled as a park because it is a park here in Taos. And this park is going to offer us a bunch of trees and tree growth. And remember that the POIs for trees do regrow in the same spots that they do. So adding a bunch of trees next to your base is ideal. Like I said, you can fix clusters of buildings like this. And you can also make your own building. So this is an elementary school that we have here. I want to kind of utilize this place as a base and you can build your own buildings so that you have everything in close proximity as well as a land uh, that you're going to need to grow food and all that stuff so that it's available to you. So now that we got all this stuff done and we remember that we launched this from the game itself, we can click save. Now what this is going to do is while the game is running, it's running those local maps. When the editor is running, it's going to, we're going to edit, we're going to save, and then it's going to go ahead and change those local files. This is how you see that change in the map itself. Once that button is clicked and we see that it's been saved up here, then we're good to go. Click out. Okay. Now we can go ahead and start a new game. And just to kind of show you uh, what my other save looks like. And of course we created that POI that had multiple things in it. We're going to see that that building in my current save is not there. I really hope that we get uh, better than the APC that has a turret on it, but we actually get something like that has mini guns or whatever. So anyway, we created that object right here. It is not there, but you can see that we've added the POIs and we've added buildings with multiple POIs. It's going to show up like this. So there's a bunch of trees that we added as well that are not there. That was like right here somewhere. So that's how that looks. So let's go ahead and go to exit to main menu, confirm. New game. Let's click your hometown, whatever you named it, wherever you're at. Click on there, click continue. This is my recommendation for this game. If you start with 88 people, you're going to be fine. One, you're going to be fine. Always choose the max resources because the game at some point will do some diminishing returns and resources and you're just going to start finding one can. Also keep in mind that your horde numbers, even at one, is going to be insane. A lot of you that have been playing this game know that these numbers are insane on number one. You get like, I think the biggest horde that I've ever gotten was like a thousand zombies coming at you. So setting it to the lowest possible is going to be the best bet. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at our map changes and see what has happened here. But yeah, it's going to load those objects. It's going to take a little bit more time because it's utilizing the new map data, not the old map data. And this is why it's important to go ahead and take a look at certain things. And I'm going to share with you guys a tip that I found out by messing around with the save file itself. So here we go. We're located in here. Let's get our building going. Let's just choose that one. Okay. Hit pause. Hit V so we can see. Uh, we got to get rid of this darn message. Switch channel. I wish this skip text was faster. Let's go there. But anyway, now we see that we have all of our POIs 
and we have that building that we created so now this building has food it has medicine it has guns and it has fuel so this is how you can go ahead and edit a lot of your uh, cities and a lot of your small towns to have more objects inside of them add more trees where there are none to kind of flesh out the game so that it doesn't look like uh, you know a plain construction diorama but it actually looks filled out and something that you want to play in and of course all of these POIs and everything like that have been generated but uh, yeah it, it's really helpful so the tip that I'm gonna share with you is that these guys don't have no levels okay so they're all rookies level rookie you actually can go ahead and change that out and if we go into let's go ahead and go here let's go to common and it's inside of jutsu games where is it i am so blind oh my goodness i cannot find it here oh that's because i'm in the wrong area let's go up here looting games go back local low it's always going to be found inside of your uh, local low. And you can go to Jutsu Games. And you can go to Infection Free Zone. And of course, your saves. And of course, you want to save the game. Especially when you start a new game. You want to save it and you want to back up that file so that you don't have to go through this all over again. You can click on the latest one. Go to Data. And actually, if you have notepad plus plus you can actually edit some things so corresponding to your resources here inside of your inventory you can go ahead and edit this as i know these are cheats or whatever but you can also look at and we can go to search find level usually this is zero so what we can go ahead and do once you go ahead and start that game is change it to like four or five or whatever and this is going to give you the max level for those characters the reason being is that their accuracy is going to go up their scavenge time is going to go up so that each one can have 50 percent having 150 percent scavenging speed uh and i think that correlates to how much resources they're able to pull out of a building as well so this is helpful for a lot of the things that you can Go ahead and see because when you send them out and they're all rookies they're gonna take forever to scavenge a large building like this so anyway those are my tips i hope that you enjoyed this tutorial on how to use and modify uh the maps inside of the ifz map editor and i hope that you guys uh create some cool stuff i know that the team over there at jutsu games are actually asking people to share their maps with them so uh, I think they're looking for inspiration of like, all right, how should we generate, you know, resources and all that other stuff. But again, thank you for watching. Please like, it really does help me out. Check out my Patreon. I might throw this up on um, my specific town and all the files for it on the Patreon. We'll see. But for right now, oh yeah, look at that. They did generate. Our little car crash is generated. Cool. So you can add metal, you can add brick and all that other stuff. But anyway, I hope you guys have a good day, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.